लगभग समय जितना ही प्राचीन सूर्य जितना ही तेजस्वी और आकाश जितना ही विशाल हमारे भारत देश का इतिहास ज्ञान विज्ञान और समृद्धि से सजा इतिहास शौर्य आध्यात्म और कलाकारी से छलकता इतिहास अंग्रेजी हुकूमत ने देश को बेड़ियां पहनाई एक हुए सब दीवाने देश के आजादी की अलख जगाई लाठी एनक वाले ने सत्याग्रह अनोखा छेड़ा अनगिनत बलिदानों के बाद ये देश विदेशियों ने छोड़ा लोह पुरुष ने लोहे सा अखंड बनाया भारत आजादी की नींव पर खड़ी हुई ये भव्य इमारत तभी आजादी ने कहा मैं मंजिल नहीं राह हूं अभी तो मैं शुरुआत हूं आधुनिक भारत के शिल्पियों ने दिशा दिखाई उनके एक एक कदम के साथ देश ने एक छलान लगाई सवेरों का देश जिसे कहते थे वही पहले प्रयास में मंगल तक पहुंचा मेक इन इंडिया इन तीन शब्दों ने दुनिया में हमारा नाम किया ऊंचा आज हर घर में बिजली है हर हाथ में मोबाइल फोन है हर जेब में डिजिटल पहचान हर खाते में डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट हर रसोई में स्वच्छ ईंधन और हर आवास में इज्जत घर है स्वच्छता और योग नए भारत के संस्कार हैं। वसुधैव कुटुंब का पूरा विश्व हमारा परिवार है अंग्रेज कहकर गए थे हमारे जाने के बाद देश तुम्हारा बिखर जाएगा नहीं सोचा था उन्होंने कि भारत विश्व के सबसे विशाल लोकतंत्र के रूप में निखर जाएगा आज भारत एक है अखंड है और सबसे तेजी से आगे बढ़ती अर्थव्यवस्था है आत्मनिर्भर भारत आत्मनिर्भर भारत आत्मनिर्भर भारत ये एक प्रकार से शब्द नहीं ये आज 130 करोड़ देशवासियों के लिए मंत्र बन गया आइए मनाते हैं स्वतंत्रता एकता विकास और लोकतंत्र के 75 साल 2022 में भारत अपनी आजादी के 75 साल पूरे करेगा आइए इस महापर्व की तैयारी में जुट जाते हैं आइए बनाते हैं आत्मनिर्भर भारत आइए मनाते हैं भारत की आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, bonjour uh, and a good evening to all of you on behalf of the Embassy of India in Paris. Uh, for your kind attention, a French translation of the full event is available on installing Livre Voice app and entering the code 646889. Une tra traduction française est disponible en installant l'application Livre Voice. Uh, if you wish to hear it in French, please feel free to install it. We have a QR code on the screen. Thank you. Our guests will be joining us soon. Thank you for your patience.
Before we start the event, I would like to give a very short introduction of the day. Today, the 8th of April, marks the 19th day of Sadhguru's 100-day journey, traveling 30,000 kilometers across the world, accelerating awareness for the Save Soil movement. 19 days of relentless rain and snow and weather throughout his journey has not prevented him riding for hours at a stretch from London, cruising through the Netherlands, Germany, Prague, Vienna, Slovenia, Rome, Geneva, and today he will be with us in Paris. And throughout his journey, he has been meeting global leaders, influencers, citizens, and their elected representatives who have hosted the Save Soil event so far. On behalf of the Embassy of India Paris, again, once again, welcome to you, and we would like to sh show short glimpses of this journey so far. Soil is not a separate subject. If we are interested in health, if we are interested in agriculture, if we are interested in the well-being of the citizens of today and the unborn child of tomorrow, adding into soil right now, this is a must-do thing in our life. Soil. So, this memorandum of understanding that we are signing, it will also bring some technical assistance to the Caribbean region. This is a historic moment because here is the first step to turn around. It's an extraordinary campaign. You know, it's shocking and unnerving. I wish you a very uh, successful, joyful, uh, exhilarating, a journey. I will take care of the acceleration and joy myself. Yeah. What I need is, next hundred days from 21st of March, we want the whole world to talk about soil. <laughs> if you want to say, I love you to your child, you must just say, save soil. Because it is a more committed way of saying, I love you. You are probably one of the most famous Indians. And what you're doing today is really important because people like you who have a wonderful following of millions and millions of people, and what you're doing with that is so important with saving the soil. Uh, in the last 20 years, over 300,000 farmers have committed suicide. If this doesn't wake you up, what else I'm asking? What else needs to happen? Sadhguru, you have the ability to change the world for the better. This many people, 6,000 people with today's technology available, various platforms available. If you make up your mind, you yourself can reach three to four million people, yes or no? Will you make it happen? This is not about the motorcycle, it's not about the journey, it's not about the song, it is about moving people on the planet. Make it happen, huh? many followers. What is the thing I can do to help to save the soil? In your neighborhood, do a jig. Initially, people will think, what's wrong with her? <laughs> After some time, kids will come and dance with you. Tell them, just go and tell your parents, they must talk about this. 
I am saying go and request people, I am saying at this time if you don't talk to people, we will be a very regretful generation. Please let's not go there. I think if we all contribute, then we can… we have a really strong voice. Say so. about to start, uh, there is a lot of crowds still waiting for us uh, to get inside. There has been so much excitement and everybody is so excited to hear Sadhguru talk about safe soil. Tonight was absolutely overwhelming and I was so, so honored to have the sure. opportunity, first of all, just to meet Sadhguru. It was a huge honor. Uh, Sadhguru is uh, very charismatic and um, he says it as it is. I want all graffiti artists to whatever walls that you have, make sure that you use this, this is our time, this is our time on the planet. What we do here is our business, let's do the right things and save soil and let's make it happen. One of the most beautiful cities of Europe, It is time that we in twenty-first century show that we are a mature citizens of this planet, that we want long-term well-being for ourselves and future generations. This is the opportunity, Save Soil is that moment. <laughs> And I'm convinced that both our Minister of Agriculture as well as the entire Ministry fully supports that trend or that direction. He is uh, offering me much more than I came to ask him for. <laughs> it's our common issue together. It's not for one nation, for one person, but uh, we as people have to unite and uh, to solve this. wonderful city of Vienna. Soil is a common denominator to bring all of us together. Make sure the world gets it now. La 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 is your mantra for now, for these ninety-three days. And above all, don't pick a fight with anybody, it doesn't matter what they're doing because we need every one of them. Namaskar. Yes, I know war is an important thing, but it's a, such an important thing that we can do without in our lives. At least from here on, cutting-edge technology should not go into military weaponry. This you must pitch for. So, uh, how do you feel here in Ljubljana, in Slovenia? Uh, feeling like it's home. <laughs> Rishimo first! All of us have been part of this destruction. The only way is all of us become part of the solution also. So let's make it happen. Yeah. 
riding on to Italy. Italy is raining heavily tonight. Here in Venice, what a city! I am a huge admirer of Rome because whoever did it, their sense of geometry is so fantastic. The former president of European Parliament, uh, he is one hundred percent with us and uh, FAO is our partners now. And we are very happy that we are aligned in our message to hide the profile of soils and we believe that is very much needed. This uh, great city which is known as the Eternal City, we must understand over two thousand years ago, this Eternal City made the mistake of overfarming the region and the erosions that caused did tremendous damage and that was also the fall of the city at that time. So, the Romans of today should never make that mistake once again. Ladies and gentlemen, our guests are here. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadhguruji, His Excellency Ambassador of Mauritius, Sri Vijayan Vilayatan, India's permanent representative to UNESCO, Ambassador Vishal Sharma, Excellencies, esteemed guests, experts and subject speakers of uh, our day, Sri uh, Mr. Paul Liu, Mr. John Francois Susanna, Ms. Claire Chenu, President of the IUCN French Committee, Ms. Maud Lelievre, President of France Nature Environment, Mr. Arnaud Schwartz. Deputy Mayor of Bobigny, Mr. Ranjit Singh. Indian Community, Cultural Associations, members of the Isha Foundation, members of the 4 per 1000 Initiative, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Embassy of India Paris, it is my pleasure today to welcome all of you to today's panel discussion on Conscious Planet, Save Soil Movement, where soil experts will be in conversation with Sadhguruji. The embassy has the honor to host this event in collaboration with Isha Foundation and the 4 per 1000 initiative. To briefly introduce today's program, the moderator will invite the panelists for their initial remarks, which will be followed by an open panel discussion. There will also be a question and answer session at the end. To start with, today we have among us Dr. Paul Liu, who will be moderating the discussion. Dr. Liu is the Executive Secretary of the International 4 per 1000 Initiative. This initiative was launched by France at UNFCC COP21 in Paris, December 2015. This initiative carries the vision of worldwide healthy and carbon-rich soils to combat climate change and end hunger. He has extensive experience heading the International Relations Department of the French Ministry for seven years. Thereafter, he spent nine years developing agriculture in French overseas territories as technical advisor for agriculture, fisheries and forestry, and as the director of ODA DOM. I welcome you, sir, to the stage. Dr. Jean-Francois Susanna today, who is present with us, is currently the Vice President for International Affairs at INRAE, the French National Research Institute, an IPCC expert, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and a member of the Scientific and Technical Committee of the International 4 per 1000 Initiative. 
He obtained his PhD in plant physiology at the USTL Montpellier in 1986. After becoming a senior scientist, he led a research lab on grassland ecosystems for many years. Since 1998, Dr. Susana is a member of the working group second of the IPCC and was the lead author for the third, fourth, and the fifth assessment reports and shared with all the IPCC authors the Nobel Prize for Peace in 2007. He continues to scientific expertise in agricultural international organizations like FAO and coordinates many national and international projects on the climate impacts of agriculture. Welcome to you, sir, to the stage. Dr. Claire Shenu, who is with us today, is currently the coordinator of the European EJP Soil, European Joint Program on Soil, a researcher and a professor at the Agro Paris Tech, and a member of the Scientific and Technical Committee of the International 4000 Initiative again. Dr. Claire Shenu is a soil scientist with a PhD in applied geology. She is currently a professor of soil science at the Agro Paris Tech after being a research scientist at INRAE, the National French Institute for Agronomy Research, for 20 years. Her research deals with soil organic matter, which has a prominent role in ecosystem services provided by soil. Please welcome to the stage, madam. <laughs> Last but not the least, Sadhguruji needs no introduction. Sadhguru is a yogi, mystic, a visionary, and a two-time New York Times best-selling author. Ranked amongst the 50 most influential people in India, he is known as a speaker and opinion maker in the international community. He has been conferred the Padma Vibhushan, India's highest annual civil award, accorded for exceptional and distinguished service. Sadhguru has been a primary speaker at the United Nations General Assembly and several other UN forums. He has also been regularly invited to speak at establishments such as the World Economic Forum, the World Bank, the House of the Lords, the University of Oxford, MIT, Google, Microsoft, just to name a few. Sadhguru, the founder of Conscious Planet and the Safe Soil Movement, started his solo journey on a motorbike from London on 21st March, which will take him 30,000 kilometers across 27 countries, from the UK to Middle East and finally to Southern India, where the Kaveri Calling Project an offshoot of the Rally of Rivers, initiated by Sadhguru himself, has enabled 1,25,000 farmers to plant 62 million trees to revive soil and the river of Kaveri. It is my honor and pleasure today to invite you, sir, to the stage. Before we start the discussion, I think it will be a wonderful idea to have a short video to understand the science behind the Save Soil campaign. We are talking about climate change, carbon emissions and global warming and various other aspects. But we are not addressing soil. Soil is the habitat upon which zillions of lives thrive. Once there is no richness in soil, then you have forsaken the planet in many ways. Every responsible scientist in the world and the UN agencies are clearly saying we have only eighty to hundred harvests left. That means approximately forty-five to fifty years of agricultural soil left on the planet. By 2045, we will be producing forty percent less food than what we are producing right now and our populations will be 9.3 billion people. The food shortages that could manifest in the next twenty-five years the consequences of that is unimaginable. Civil wars will unfold across the world once there is food shortage. What we are facing now is soil extinction. Why is soil becoming extinct? Where is it going away? What is happening to our soil? We must understand if you add organic content 
to sand, sand will turn into soil. If you remove all organic content from the soil, soil will become sand. In normal agricultural soil, the minimum organic content should be between three to six percent. The most minimum is three percent. At least this minimum to keep the soil alive, to keep the soil as living soil is a must. Agricultural soils across the world, the depletion is so heavy. In most countries, more than fifty percent of the topsoil is already gone in the last hundred years. The nutrient levels have dropped significantly. The level of micronutrients you would get from your food in early twentieth century to what you are getting from the same food now has dropped ninety percent. If you ate one orange in nineteen twenties, what you got from it, now in twenty twenty, if you have to get the same, you will have to eat eight oranges. This is what we have done to our food. Soil is the biggest ecosystem on the planet, and so few people know anything about it. One teaspoon of healthy soil probably contains more microbes than there are people on Earth. The microbial life in the first twelve to fifteen inches of topsoil is the basis of our existence. It is this magic beneath our feet which has produced the life that we are. This first twelve to fifteen inches of soil is the basis of life for eighty-seven percent of life on this planet, including you and me. We have to begin to recognize that what we call our soil, Mother Earth, is a living organism. Open soils, ripped open by plowing, open to sunlight, is the basis of destruction of microbial life. So the focus should be on agriculture, the focus should be on seeing that land is under shade as much as possible, some kind of shade, grasses, herbs, bushes, trees. Conscious Planet is launching Save Soil Movement to bring about a policy change to regenerate soil. As a part of this, <laughs> I'm sixty-five and I'm riding thirty thousand kilometers a lone motorcycle journey. 30,000 kilometers across 24 nations to activate support from the citizenry to assure the governments long-term investments will be appreciated. So it's extremely important that soil regeneration is enshrined in the policy of every government on the planet. We must change the narrative on the planet that soil is a wealth, a legacy we have received from previous generations and we have to pass it on as living soil for future generations. We are in a cusp of time, if you do the right things now, in the next fifteen to twenty-five years, we can significantly turn this situation around and regenerate the soil. But if we allow this to progress like this for another thirty to forty years, after forty years if we attempt this, then it could take hundred and fifty to two hundred years because that much loss of biodiversity would have happened. From twenty-first of March for one hundred days, the whole world, every human being on the planet should talk soil. We must hear the word soil, save soil everywhere to see that the narrative on the planet changes towards the most vital aspect of our life, the soil. Each one of you should reach as many people as you can to make this happen, Many global leaders and influencers are already participating in the movement. Be a part of this and let us make it happen. From my part, uh, as much as I can contribute. And the movement that you are taken up, I could not expect any more God's blessing than that. Sadhguru, and this campaign is so important. We are going to save the soil. Do your part. And saving the soils. And our planet's future depend on it. Sadhguru, <laughs> save soil, my friend. Save soil, let's make it happen. Antigen Barbuda is part of the Save Soil mission. We commend you for what you're doing. That is why we are happy to sign the MOU. The science and philosophy that backs the thought behind movement is tremendous. Save soil. Let's make it happen. Save the soil. We know what we must do, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. 
Let's make it happen. Let's make this happen. Let us make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. It was a beautiful video. Uh, I'm sure you think the same. Uh, I would like to mention that the ambassador of the Republic of India to France and Monaco, His Excellency Mr. Javed Ashraf, is uh, in traffic, moving from one event to the other. He will be with us shortly. Meanwhile, I would like to invite Sadhguruji for a brief remarks and his thoughts on the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsap, celebrating the 75th year of independence of India. So. <coughs> Hello. No. Hello. Yeah, little bit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <coughs> Jananam Sukadam Maranam Karunam Milanam Madhura Smaranam Karunam Kalevasya Diha Sakalam Karunam Samaya Dipate Akilam Karunam Namaskaram, good evening to everyone. Wow. This is our time on the planet. And our time on the planet is brief. What we do with it is entirely ours. Or we can blame the past and neglect the future, or we can take this time into our responsible action. This is all we, this is all we have with life. So the chant just meant in some simple way that only one who takes charge of time will know life and will have an impact on life. We don't take charge of our times, but we talk about something else endlessly. Life will pass by because it's not waiting for any of us. It's not a clock ticking away, it's our life ticking away. So, it's seventy-five years of India's independence. In 1947, when India attained its uh, freedom as a republic, well, it became a republic a couple of years later, but when it became an independent nation, the average uh, life expectancy of an Indian was twenty-eight years. That means a whole lot of us shouldn't be alive right now by those standards. Today, we have slowly inched towards seventy-four years as the average life expectancy which is a massive movement for a nation from twenty-eight years to seventy-four years. There might have been many things we have done. We've gone to space, uh, we've gone to Mars and this and that, industry, business, technologies. But the most important thing is all these things are being done in the interest of human well-being. If that is forgotten, then there's no point. Everything, our technology, our commerce, our industry, our business, our politics, can't ignore. Everything is supposed to be about human well-being. If that one thing, if we forget, every process that we conduct will become an extremely cruel process and life negative process. India has faced terrible famines in the past, especially in the last two hundred years before 1947 or even up to 1950, the 1942 famine took 3.2 million people in four months' time. Famine is the worst possible way to die 
If a bomb drops on us, we are gone. Famine is a slow fade. Terrible things happen to human beings. We came out of that with a, a very a robust system called Green Revolution. But we did not understand the Green Revolution and its methods were only a bridge to cross a certain situation and we have to get back to terra firma once again. That we have been a little slow, now we're waking up. It's very important, whatever we do in an emergency is not a standard procedure. As emergency, to save human lives, we'll do certain things. That should not become the standard procedure of a nation or a civilization. That will be disastrous. Emergency activity should remain as emergency activity. So, in that context, today, sixty-two percent of India's soil has come to a place where the organic content is either point-five percent or less. On an average, it's point-six-eight percent across the country, which is a serious situation. It is summertime now in India. If you fly from Delhi to Chennai and look down, you will see a brown desert, except for Western Ghats and northeastern part of India, the entire plain region looks like a brown desert. This has happened in just forty to forty-five years of, I don't know whether to call it irresponsible or ignorant farming, because there is a history of farming in southern India for over twelve thousand years, organized farming. But twelve thousand years, we managed our soils well. But in forty-five years, we destroyed. I don't know whether this is ignorance, irresponsibility or science without sense, what it is. How we apply science is very important. We may have, science may give us tools, how we use it, who uses it is very important. If we don't use it properly, something that could be enormously beneficial could become terribly damaging to ourselves. As we see, as wars unfold all over the world, not right now, I am saying in the last hundred years, how many wars have we fought and how many times we have thought, never again we're going to do this. And again, go back to the same thing. And every time it gets, in terms of military machine, it's getting better and better because newer and newer technologies go into it, but in terms of human experience, it's become worse by the day. So, this is a case of science and technology being misused. Science and technology used by ignorant hands can be terribly damaging. Unfortunately, Something similar has happened in agriculture, not just in India, across the world. In Northern Europe, today, average organic content is 1.48 percent, that's what they're telling me. Southern Europe is 1.1 to 1.2 percent. Below 1 percent in temperate climate is considered desertification. In Africa, the average is supposed to be 0 0.3 percent. In United States, is about 1.4 percent and over 30 percent of the topsoil is supposed to be just gone, disappeared. Like this terrible statistics all over the place, it may be the numbers may be up and down, people can argue and debate about the numbers. The important thing is we are moving towards a destructive process. We are moving towards a disaster because UNFAO telling us now that the average loss of biodiversity per year is approximately around twenty-seven thousand species per year are going extinct. At this rate, we will be in serious trouble in thirty to forty years' time. This is a, a very high-powered scientific panel who have enormous experience in this subject and also a very committed... Uh, uh, one thing I have to say is not because I'm in France, I've always been saying it everywhere and people are saying, Sadhguru, how can you say this only about France? I said, France at least try to bring everybody to sense when it comes to soil and agriculture. In the last few years, they've strived for it. How successful uh, they are or not, they should tell me, but there has been a striving. The narrative at least has been in the right direction. So here we have 
people of science and also people of policy, both are here. I think I will leave it to them to speak further. Thank you very much for being here. Before we start the discussion, it is my honor to invite His Excellency, Ambassador of the Republic of India to France and Monaco, Mr. Javed Ashraf, to kindly take the stage and share his opening remarks. Well, I thought uh, Sadhguru had already started, and so uh, by intervention at this point, but um, really, uh, first of all, apologies for coming late. It was the Friday evening rain-drenched traffic, uh, which uh, just goes on to show that we really do need to reimagine our cities. But um, um, Swadhguruji, a warm welcome to you in Paris uh, on your long journey across uh, Europe and on to India. But before that, you've already been in Latin America. I'd like to also uh, welcome uh, His Excellency and my good friend, um, Mr. Vijayan Valadon, Ambassador of Mauritius to France, uh, our permanent representative uh, of uh, India to UNESCO, Sri Vishal Sharma. Uh, particularly like to welcome also uh, the panelists here today, a very eminent panelist, Dr. Paul Liu, Executive Secretary of the Four. Perth Housing Initiative, Soils for Food Security and Climate, and again, an example of what Sadhguru was just speaking about, of how France is leading the effort in creating consciousness about soil. Professor Claire Chenu, again, Professor of Soil Science, co-chair of Four Perth Housing, um, and of course, Dr. Jean-Francois Susanna, Vice President for International Affairs at INRA Paris again. Uh, all three leading examples of, uh, that validates uh, the point that, uh, uh, that Sadhguru mentioned. Now, you've already heard that the thing that we take most for granted is the earth beneath our feet. We almost assume its permanence, its inviolability, it's something that just exists for us, but it's perhaps nothing that matters more to life on planet in every sense of the word, not just in terms of our food security, not just in terms of the quality of food we eat, um, but in every sense of the word, we are here because of soy. And it is therefore something that we need to worry about. Um, clearly, as you've just heard about the, what human beings are doing to something that nurtures them and their life on earth, which is the soil and the degradation that it is causing. We do hear a lot about um, climate change now. We hear a lot about air pollution. There's a lot of consciousness about now oceans, about rivers, about, about water in general. But it is something that we do not very often hear about in public discourses, which is about soil. But we've just heard about the, the impact that human activities are causing on this. Let me just say that there is already, as always, UN initiatives in this regard. UN is always there to take initiatives. We've got three conventions uh, which speak about soil. We have a UN Soil Health Day, which is December 5. We have the UN Year of Soil in 2015. And as I said, you have, of course, the three conventions, including on the Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Convention on Biodiversity, and uh, um, uh, conventions. Um, so I think where what we also have are government initiatives. Every government, and I would like to say that in particular for India, uh, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi launched the Soil Health Card in 2015. It seemed like to a lot of people a strange idea. But the idea that every farmer could have a certificate that gave him an accurate assessment of the health of the soil is in a sense similar to the health cards that we have as individuals. But there's also a large number of initiatives that exist in the world, uh, in, in our country, now at the national level, at the state level, for conservation and preservation of soil. But all of this will regulations, policies, initiatives, money, finances, will have very little impact without creating social awareness or social movement, social consciousness around the responsibilities 
that we as citizens and individuals must bear. And it is the only path to real success. And it is this initiative that is at the heart of Sadhguru's mission, which is the Safe Soil mission, for which he's undertaking this extraordinary journey, which started on March 21st in London, will, on his motorcycle, weave its way through 23 countries, 30 cities, cover 30,000 kilometers before it ends in Coimbatore in southern India. It's a journey on which he is speaking to thousands and thousands of people, policy makers, media, government, citizens, activists, civil society, academics, researchers, to create this consciousness around the urgency and the need to save or to work towards saving the soil. Now, we all know Sadhguru, I think it isn't just the fact that he is a great uh, guru of, in, a person of great wisdom, insight, vision, but that he also combines science, spirituality, social consciousness, and social mobilization, four S's. And why I mention all these four is because it isn't just science, it is also spirituality which will be important for saving our planet, for saving our biodiversity, for protecting soil, for our water, for our rivers. And why do I say this? I say this because every civilization, every society, when it digs deep into its heritage, it will find the words of wisdom in the reverence for nature that has nurtured us, that we are part of. And it's important to dive deep into it in order for us to realize the permanence of that wisdom, the eternal message that these contain, along with science and mobilization. We are also aware that this is not the first time Sadhguru is undertaking a vision of this nature. His Commitment to ecology, to nature, to planet has been there all along. And it isn't just known to those 11 million volunteers in 300 centers of Isha Foundation across the world. But for example, we've had the project Green Hands, which we launched in 2004, which was meant to bring children into the process of afforestation and to also bring farmers. So we have 70,000 farmers to whom 38 million samplings, if I remember the figure correctly, uh, have been distributed. And uh, this is also on one day, I think there was what, 850,000 saplings that were planted, which is a Guinness Book of World Record. In 2017, uh, he launched the um, <laughs> then, uh, then, of course, in 2017, um, uh, he again launched an extraordinary program that was to rejuvenate our rivers. Our rivers, not just in India, but in many parts of the world. Rivers, remember, have been the source of civilizations, of cities, of... of across and, and societies have risen and fallen with the, and how rivers have also nurtured, been nurtured or they have died. So that is an extraordinary program and I was there in Singapore and I remember uh, the joining uh, Sadhguru in conveying that message. But here are the numbers. 162 million people. That's nearly three times the size of the population of France. 162 million people have participated in that venture. There are 18 state governments today that are actively implementing this. This is a mass movement to save and rejuvenate the rivers. And I think it holds the key to the future of our country and in general, if we continue with this movement across the world to saving uh, civilization, planet and human life. But there is also, as far as Sadhguru is concerned, part of this is also the Kaveri Calling Initiative, which he has been running, which once again has been recognized 
as the largest ecological program involving farmers to save a river. Just as the, by the way, the United Nations Environment Program already recognizes the river rejuvenation program as the largest ecological uh, program in the world. So this continues what has already been a series of initiatives for the ecology of the world. And today, when we look at the devastation, the depredations, the consequences of climate change in all its dimensions, and the impacts that our activities have had, the starting point of restoring the future of this planet lies in raising consciousness, in mobilizing people to take on the initiatives themselves to do their part and not just believe that annual meetings at the United Nations or what the governments do will save us. So I think this is a very important initiative and I'm very glad that uh, Sadhguru has decided to be here in Paris as part of his itinerary and we look forward to some really exciting uh, and, and, and insightful uh, engagement and I'm sure that when he gets on his motorbike on the 10th and leaves Paris for the next destination, which is Brussels, I think there will be a lot of us here who would look down at the earth that we walk on and do our little bit, begin to do our little bit to save the soil. So with those words, let me again welcome you, welcome this very distinguished and eminent panelists uh, for our lively discussion here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Dr. Paul Liu, this evening and this beautiful discussion is yours to take forward, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sadhguru, to be with us. Well, it's difficult to start off with all those nice words, all what you already done. Um, it seems to me that I have nothing to say in addition, but, well, I will try to do my best and forgive my English because, you know, let's you are get, in France. Let's get to the soil. <laughs> Thank you. We'll try to introduce this uh, scientific and spiritual debate and exchange. I just would like to recall what was already said, but it seems to me very important that we are talking about soil, the soil of our planet. Well, this just the small, fine layers of mixed mineral and organic matter, as you very well said in the movie. And it's everywhere on our planet, well, where there is no ocean, of course. We are talking about centuries, even millennium, to allow the formation of one of a few centimeters of soils, depending on the pattern, parent rocks and, and the climate. But these thin layers of soil, of the surface of the earth, is the living support of all the life in our planet. And it's why it is so important. Our soil takes thousands of years to form. It is unfortunately not uncommon to see them disappear in a few years, as you just said. Nowadays, the UNFAO considers that more than 75% of our planet's soils are degraded. And if we are not careful, in 2050, 90% of the soil will be affected. And the main factor of this degradation is man, especially the use of the use he makes from the land and the soil through agriculture. Well, climate change, which was already begun and which are collectively we are trying to mitigate, is only making the situation worse. Just to start the discussion, I will just start turning toward the panel, if you allow me, Sadhguru. Please. And uh, Jean-Francois Susanna, what prospects do we have for climate change by 2100? And what impact should it have on soils and consequently on agriculture? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And uh, I'm really uh, humbled uh, by your campaign, uh, Sadhguru. What you are doing is really impressive. Uh, let, me, let me answer the question. Uh, what we face with climate change is uh, not only the global warming, but it is also about uh, extreme weather events. 
With those extreme weather events, we see large threats for soils because we get extreme precipitation, so heavy rainfall. We get also prolonged droughts, which uh, conduce to wind erosion. And therefore, uh, what may happen is that we have combined negative effects of soil degradation on the one hand and climate change leading to uh, declines in crop yields and therefore increased threats for food security. So uh, we have uh, to think uh, broad and to think on how we can regenerate our soils and uh, also reduce the emissions uh, of greenhouse gases. And uh, in this way, uh, the 4 per thousand initiative was launched uh, at the time of COP21 in Paris uh, with that vision that indeed uh, restoring soils would be uh, crucial for climate change adaptation, for mitigation, for food security. So it is really uh, the central place for environment and for ecology. Thank you. Mrs. Clerchenu, in, in this context of climate change, what is your opinion and your scientific point of view on the situation of agriculture and the effect of the climate crisis on the production in the future years? Thank you. Well, first I would like to, to thank Sadhguru for this campaign. I'm quite amazed and thrilled by it. And one thing I'm um, often talking about raising awareness and something I was very sensitive to is that you said, and Mr. Ambassador you said, it's also raising consciousness. And for me, that's different. And I have to think it over and maybe <laughs> integrate that. Now, coming back to the question of uh, Paul Lu, well, as Jean-François, uh, Susanna said, uh, climate change is going to have a very strong impact on uh, food production, or primary productivity in general, and food production. And it will hence indirectly affect soils because soils are made partly of what comes from the vegetation and the organic matter you were talking about. It's all that has been alive or is alive. It's the matter that comes from life. So this will decrease if production uh, decreases. Now, what I would like to say is that there are very complex interactions and strong interactions between climate change and soils. Climate change is going to degrade soils, erosion, drought, uh, losses of biodiversity because the organisms die, are not adapted to the new conditions. Um, but also, the status of soil will affect how agroecosystems and how ecosystems adapt to climate change. If you take, for example, a soil that is poor in organic matter, it has a less good ability to resist to erosion. So erosion uh, will be stronger. It has there's less organisms, there's less diversity and abundance of organisms, so less capacity, biological capacity to adapt to these new conditions. And there's also less capacity to hold the water and then to go through drought events and allow for food production even with a drought event. So there's, yes, climate change is going to affect uh, very strongly soils, but the status of soil can have an influence on the extent of damage by climate change. So we absolutely need to sustainably manage soils. We need to save soils also for adaptation to climate change. Well, Sadhguru, the scientists are not very optimistic. Um, what is your opinion? How, how can we see the change in the relation between soil and, and climate change? The uh, talking, preaching, campaigning time is over. We have come to a place where if there is no significant policy change in all the nations, we cannot really make it happen. Individual farmers doing something, that time is over. If you keep your piece of the land really nice and I keep it very nice, this is good. But it's not sustainable, we don't know what the next generation will do, they may rip it apart. So it has to be enshrined in the policy. When I say it has to be enshrined in the policy, for example, I'm not very familiar with the city, but I'm sure in every old city it will be there. If you go to the old part of the city, you will see that uh, homes are built in such a way, there is no concept of a window. Wall to wall, wall to wall, they've built homes. In every old city, it's like that. But if you go to the new part of the city, if you have 10,000 square feet of land, you can't build 10,000 square feet of building. You'll have to leave certain space for yourself, your neighbor, whatever. What is the difference? At that time there were no laws, 
now there are laws. But if you have ten acres of land, you can plow every inch of it and turn it into a desert in the next ten years' time. There is no law even to ask you why have you done it. So there has to be a law that if you own agricultural land, minimum three percent organic content has to be there because that's a fundamental responsibility that we owe to future generations because soil is not our property, it's a legacy that's come to us. Passing it on as a living soil is the most fundamental thing. How the hell you want to live or die is your business, but you cannot simply take away the possibility of future generations. Today UNFAO is talking about that the soil or the food that we're eating right now is the food that belongs to not even the little children here, it belongs to the unborn child. Unborn child means that is the most helpless creature, absolutely no defenses, an unborn child. Eating up the food that belongs to an unborn child, in my emotion, feels like a crime against humanity to me. Thank you. So we're talking about soil, we're talking about erosion. Worldwide, the equivalent of a soccer field is eroded every five seconds. Erosion washes away 25 to 40 billion tons of topsoil every year, significantly reducing agricultural yield, as you just said, and the soil ability to store and recycle carbon, nutrients, and water. For example, Grain production losses due to erosion have been estimated by FAO, again, at 7.6 million tons per year. If nothing is done to mitigate erosion, there could be a total reduction of more than 253 million tons of cereal by 2050. This yield loss would be equivalent to removing 1.5 million square kilometers of land from agricultural production, the equivalent of all arable land in India. According to the most alarmist forecast humanity, you said in the movie, we would have 80 to 100 harvests left in reserve in the soil of the planet. Mrs. Claire Chenu, can you quickly explain to us how the soil functions well, very shortly, sorry. <laughs> and the importance of carbon in that, particularly in terms of agricultural production and therefore global food security. Okay, what do you want? Two hours? One hour? Well, no, <laughs> I'm afraid we have no time no, for no, that. But I, I, it's a pleasure always to say how we depend on soils, how are soils important in their functioning. Uh, because uh, soils were, it's where the roots grow and thrive, so we depend on soils for all um, veg, uh, plant production and 90% uh, of our food come indirectly or directly from soils. Soils are also where the rain um, falls, so they infiltrate, they retain the water so that plants can use it, they transfer it. Um, and also soils recycle uh, the nutrients, the organic matter and the nutrients, again, to feed the plant, and they store carbon, it's important for the climate, and they hold an amazing biodiversity, a quarter of total of our planet biodiversity lives in the soil, that's absolutely huge. So carbon in that, well, soil carbon is more or less half of soil organic matter. Sadhguru has spoken a lot about soil organic matter. So everything and soil organic matter is extremely important uh, because it helps the soil particles together, it retains water, it is the food of all the organisms mm -hmm. in soil, of the biodiversity. And also, it's a way to trap the CO2 from the atmosphere. So managing, so that's why when soil quality or soil health is being assessed, quite often the main the first indicator that comes is soil carbon. Behind that is soil organic matter. And so it's a priority, and it's a priority that uh, of the four per mil initiative to try to preserve and maintain soil carbon uh, for food security and for climate. So it was only Thank you. a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. You should be a professor, no? Um, I'll try one yes. of these days. <laughs> so, Mr. Jean-François Susanna, what do we know about soils, about their health? What is a soil health nowadays? And what does science tell us about their functioning 
and production prospects in the changing context. So what is really soil health that we are talking about and uh, what is the relation with the production? So I think it's uh, fairly simple. Um, when, you think, when you speak about health, you're speaking about a living uh, organism, isn't it? Uh, health is something uh, which is uh, strongly attached to life. And uh, when you speak about soil health, you're actually dealing with the health uh, of not really one organism, but a community, a major community of uh, uh, zillions of organisms that work together to create this healthy soil, which is going to recycle the nutrients to provide uh, growth for the plants and uh, food for the humans. So uh, it is essential we can uh, preserve that soil health. And uh, let's try to be a bit more optimistic, maybe. We are facing this huge erosion, but indeed we know how we can uh, reverse the, so the uh, conditions of erosion. And this is very simple. It was well said, I think, in the movie. It's just about the plant cover. If you have a vegetation cover throughout the year, and if, uh, if you have a healthy vegetation, then you will improve your soil and you will regenerate. So this is really addressed in our days uh, as uh, regenerative agriculture. That's uh, maybe uh, the way it is phrased uh, in a number of uh, English-speaking countries. Uh, we tend to call it in France uh, agroecology, which is combination of agriculture and ecological understanding. And in this way, you create practices whereby you can regenerate soils and you can uh, think of uh, this recycling of this life between the soil, between the plants, and between the humans and the animals. And this is really the way we need to go. Uh, how would you do this? Uh, I agree that uh, we certainly would need some uh, legal elements uh, there to, to make it uh, compulsory in some sense to preserve soil health. We may need also economics. And uh, one buzzword uh, that I hear more and more, uh, which is very present at uh, the European Commission in our days, is uh, carbon farming. So this is about uh, getting increases in your soil carbon through farming, through regenerative farming, through agroecology. And uh, actually, why not pay the farmers for that service? And this is really a new way of thinking that may bring farmers that are obviously uh, always uh, very sensitive uh, to their uh, income, uh, to the, the sales they can have. And by having uh, this extra revenue about uh, carbon, they may go in the right direction of regenerating soils. Thank you. So Sadhguru, wisely you just said before that we should enforce a law with having soil with 3% of uh, organic matter at least. So in this context of erosion, uh, Jean-François just proposed to to help farmers with additional income. So what is your point of view on this? Yes, uh, when I say uh, a policy, I'm talking about, see right now for example in Europe, uh, it's around 1.48 percent in Northern Europe and Southern Europe is just over 1 percent. If you set up an incentive, if you raise your organic content in your field to 3 percent, you will get a certain amount of uh, incentive, financial incentive. And the next thing is there are industries and corporations who are talking about carbon sequestering and carbon trade. So for that, you can also add extra income by counting it as carbon trade. And the next thing is when, when the produce comes to the marketplace, Right now, suppose if you go to the market, they say this apple is organic. What is the other apple? Is it inorganic? <laughs> is there such a thing? So right now this complex thing of trying to check how much fertilizer, how much insecticide or how pesticide is in this apple is an impossible thing, believe me. Because on which day you applied it? When it was flowering, did you apply it? After it became a small fruit, did you apply it? After it became a big fruit, did you apply it? What season did you apply it? Did it rain on that day? Was it sunlight that day? All these things will determine how much of it actually gets into the produce, not exactly the usage. The usage, you're only thinking that it may damage your life. 
that if you eat the fertilizer or pesticide, it damages your life. This is like you're concerned about the fruit, but you're not concerned about the root. So right now the concern is to keep the soil organisms alive, because only if they stay, al stay alive, we will all be alive because we are just a consequence of that life. Even in terms of evolution, we are just a consequence of that. So, when the fruit or the vegetable comes to the marketplace, instead of marking it as organic and whatever else the rest is, if you mark it as this fruit comes from a field which has three percent organic content. Now there is enough science to tell you, if the organic content in the soil is three percent, what are the extra micronutrients this particular fruit has? What are the health benefits that this will give you? What are the preventive things that will happen to you in terms of ill health? All this science is already there. Both physical and psychological health is very connected to the micronutrients we consume. Right now we've been through a pandemic. You don't need to consult any great virologist. If you ask uh, any basic doctor, they will tell you, if you're lacking, vitamin A, B6, B12, foliate, iron, zinc, magnesium, you will be more susceptible to respiratory infections. This is a known thing. And uh, just look at this in the world, almost in every country people are deficient of these things simply because it's not there in the soil, it's not there in the food. Now, I'm not trying to say a pandemic would not, would not have happened if the soil was good. Definitely it would not have caused this much panic as it did if we were of a stronger constitution. And that stronger constitution is not one day's thing. It doesn't happen by going to the gym. It happens by eating the right kind of food and by being connected with the soil through the food and also otherwise. If that otherwise is not possible, say, city, city dwelling people, but at least the food should have that. They're talking about erosion. See, this is something Europe needs to watch out and also Northern Am North America. Wherever there has been snowfall, if right now we're talking about 1.5 degree rise or something, if 1.5 degree rise uh, centigrade happens, we're hoping it's only 1.5. Even if it's 1.5, the amount of snow that was coming down, instead of snow, it will come in the form of rain. Once it comes in the form of rain, your land, your terrain, uh, the nature of uh, this uh, vegetation that you have is not capable of taking this because your vegetation is not like tropical vegetation. Now when it comes down in the form of water, the kind of damage that causes to your soil is far, far more than what's happened till now. So if you don't strengthen it now, as these things increase, as they pick up momentum, it becomes more and more difficult. When we say more and more difficult, loss of life will happen. Suffering will come in many different ways to human beings. So, this is a cusp of time. If we act now, if we do the… I'm saying policy, because if you don't po make policy, it won't happen universally. Only few people concerned farmers will do it, rest won't do it. And even if they do it, their children may not do it tomorrow. It has to be in the policy as there is a policy for urban land. Initially, it starts with incentives. If incentives… also if somebody ignores, incentive should, incentive should be large enough so that they cannot ignore it. And it's also important that farmers earn as much as an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. This is very important because most people are going out of farming right now. In India, sixty-three percent of India's population is in farming. We've done some kind of a survey. What we find is not even two percent of the farmers want their children to become farmers because it's a terrible thing. It's a… it's a terrible profession to pursue. Maximum number of suicides in almost every nation is among the farmers. You're right, everywhere on earth, not everywhere, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Well, we are talking about relation between soil and climate change and invoke the fact that soil store large quantity of carbon and constitute element of organic matter. Thus, it is estimated that between 1,500 and 2,400 gigaton of carbon are present in soil against only half 
to one third to the atmosphere. Well, this is quite fortunate because the carbon present in the atmosphere, particularly in the form of CO2, as you mentioned in the movie, and also methane, causes the greenhouse effect, which prevents part of the solar radiation reaching the Earth from going back into space, thus trapping the energy which, which increase the temperature in the atmosphere and cause climatic disturbance. It is therefore preferable to capture the atmospheric carbon and store it in the soil using the miracle of photosynthesis and plants as a carbon vacuum cleaner. This carbon stored in the soil improves its organic matter content and overall structure, water retention, capacity, fertility, and in the world, its health. So finally, we always come back to the importance of soil and their health to improve global food security and to fight against climate change. Well, Sadhguru, it's precisely at the time of launching your European tour that you decided to promote the movement Conscious Planet Safe Soils. Can you summarize your mindset at that time and your objective regarding the ambitious program? What were your deepest motivation? See, I've been talking about this for over thirty years now. Everybody says, Sadhguru, this is fantastic and they go to sleep. <laughs> yes, they appreciate it, they clap their hands and that's it. I'm sure uh, all others also have faced such things. Everybody says, oh, this is great. It's not great, it's terrible. I want you to understand it's terrible, it's not great. There's nothing to be proud of. When you say it's great, it's something to be proud of. <laughs> it is not something to be proud of. We have done this, we must understand first of all. Another problem is the moment we say anything environment, ecology, people are asking, okay, whose face should we bash? Who? Who is that enemy? Who is that evil man who did this? See, there is no evil design behind this. This is just human beings in pursuit of their happiness and well-being, they have done this. Hello? This did not happen because of some evil design, we want to destroy this planet. You think there was some evil force wanting to destroy this planet? There's no such thing. It's us, all of us. Knowingly, unknowingly we have done it. If we are willing, we can come together as one generation responding to this and be that generation which turn back from the brink of a disaster or sleep through this, fall over and grieve over the disaster. Unfortunately, many, many times we have done this, that we wait for the disaster to happen and then grieve over this. But this is not going to be a disaster that happens to somebody. This will happen to us or definitely to our children if we don't act upon it now. And the action is very simple. For the citizens, all I am saying is, see, we need to understand in a democratically elected government, the governments are not elected to do something fantastic. The governments are elected to just fulfill people's desire, people's mandate, what they want. That's all it is. And you, we have given them a term of four to five years in different nations. In these five years, they would like to do what normally works within five years because it's their time. Tomorrow morning if they lose the election, they go into oblivion, all right? This is the nature of politics, this is the nature of democratic process. Unless people stand up and say this, that we are ready for long-term policy making and we are with you. Uh, we have noticed repeatedly in terms of uh, various leaders in the world, whenever they try to make long-term policies which will not yield result today, but if the results will come after fifteen years or twenty years, they definitely lost the elections most of the time. <laughs> yes. So I am saying, where has it happened till now, in which a nation has it happened on this planet that sixty percent of the population of a given nation have given a mandate to the government saying, if you take long-term steps which will take ten, fifteen or twenty years to yield results, we are with you. Which population has said this? This is all I am trying to do, to get the population. 5.26 billion people have franchise in the world. I want at least three to four billion people to say something about soil in this hundred days. Thank you for that. Thank you.
So Jean-François, Suzanne, in this context, what is the position of the global scientific community? You have led the CIRCASA project and today ORCASA. In a few words, what are the issues of such programs? <coughs> yes, thank you, uh, Paul. So, so you know, we, we are certainly uh, not at the scale uh, of uh, your campaign. And uh, what we do is uh, trying to get uh, all the scientists uh, to work together. And uh, actually, we believe uh, there are a few things where we can help. Um, I guess the understanding we have already, but there are some uh, maybe improvements. Uh, for instance, understanding uh, what is the long-term fate uh, of carbon in the soil is something we would like to understand better. We would like to understand better the role of biodiversity in the way uh, soils are evolving in soil health. But importantly, uh, what, where we can help is by guiding in terms of options for the governments, for the farmers, for the stakeholders. So uh, trying to widespread uh, what could be uh, the practices to regenerate soils. Understanding these are very uh, regionally specific. They are also specific with the different farming systems. So you need to have some strong interaction uh, by creating knowledge that is based on uh, the uh, understanding of the farmers themselves plus the scientific understanding. So that's something where we struggle a bit, I must say, because uh, it is a sort of knowledge system that is not yet there and it needs to be highly interactive. The other thing we want to do is uh, help for this uh, understanding of carbon buildup. Where are we? Where are we going? Can we measure it? And there we can get help from technologies. We can combine uh, remote sensing, soil measurements, knowledge of uh, the climate, of the agricultural practices, and we can uh, readily calculate what's happening with this soil carbon, with the carbon cycling. And this is really something all stakeholders are asking. They want to know, is my soil carbon increasing? Because that's a key indicator also of soil health. And uh, could we... Um, know this also to get possibly payments uh, for that uh, service we render to the society. So that's the sort of things we are developing. Thank you. Claire, Claire Chenu, at the European level, you are in charge of EGP soil. Can you tell us about what is about this project and uh, what are the subjects that uh, this project is related to? Thank you for your interest, uh, Paul. So the European Joint Programme Soil is a research programme that has started two years ago. It associates trend in research institutes, so it's not at the same level as the campaign uh, you, you have. Um, it associates uh, research institutes from 24 European countries, and the long-term objective is to foster climate-smart and sustainable management of agricultural soils, so healthy soils, that allow to better adapt to climate change and to mitigate, contribute to mitigating climate change. As was, as was said uh, already by um, Jean-François and others, in a sense, we know what, which are the principles of a sustainable soil management, cover the soil as much as possible, diversify the vegetation, the crops, reduce the contaminants, disturb less often uh, the soil. But soils are very varied and the climates are very different. So what we do not know actually is how much, where, what is the current state of soil and how to measure it in the different contexts, different soil types. And for that, we need to assemble research. We need to coordinate between ourselves. In Europe, we are lucky in that we are quite data rich regarding soils, but our data were developed in different ways in the different countries. So we need now to, to harmonize. It's not standardizing, not at all. It is explaining how to go from how is measured a certain variable in a, in a country to how it is measured in another country. So we can build up on uh, all the knowledge uh, we have. And also there are still research questions. So we try to develop knowledge. Uh, for example, there are synergies and trade-offs between management options. And for example, some management options allow to store more carbon, but they emit more N2O, which is another greenhouse gas. 
So we need to know when this happens and how to control, how to make it that the additional emissions of N2O do not compensate for the additional storage of carbon. So it is, you know, improving the knowledge uh, for that. So another objective of the European Joint Programme is to build up a community to better align our research efforts, to better harmonize between ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Working together. Even the scientists are dreaming to work together. <laughs> Restoring soil health is central to all efforts to combat climate change, biodiversity erosion, desertification, and food insecurity. It is not very clear, it is now very clear, sorry, that if we can regenerate the planet's soil, we will increase the chance of meeting the many other challenges facing humanity. This is precisely the goal of the Four Per Mill Initiative. For those who are not familiar, I mean, you can have a look to our website, of course. In a nutshell, the ambition of the Four Per Mill Initiative as a global platform is to encourage in all stakeholders from all geographies of the world to raise general awareness to build an environment conductive to a paradigm shift in the world agriculture. That's what you were saying, Sadhguru towards sustainable agriculture that are productive, highly resilient, creating jobs and incomes, and based on the appropriate management of land and soil, such as agroecology, and ensuring sustainable development. Thanks to our 700 partners, including 310 members from all stakeholders groups, changes are taking place at the field level particularly with the adoption of appropriate practices by farmers and foresters, the development of supportive public policies, of monitoring, reporting, and verification of impact, and the scientific support to understand the evolution of soil carbon stocks and the mechanisms that lead to this outcome. Civil society is also finding answers to its desire to see agriculture and forestry around the world follow the path of agroecology. Two years ago, the initiative adopted its strategic plan 2050 that guides our action for the next 30 years based on our vision, worldwide healthy and carbon-rich soils to combat climate change and end hunger. We still have more country to convince, exactly as you do. Um, we have 41 countries at the moment with us. We would be pleased to have with us India, Mauritius, and some others. So, it's, it's a call. Sadhguru, it seems that this issue of soil health is hitting home everywhere. And that while scientists have been talking about it for many years, the general public has been unaware of this fact and its importance for the future. So you explained to us that when you were talking about it, people come back to, to sleep and come back as business as usual. So, what can we do to change that? You already answered the question, but you will do it again. <laughs> Did we have to wait until we reach a critical situation of a near point of non-return before acting? See, as a generation, uh, as a generation, it's a challenge and also a privilege that we are in a cusp of time, that if we act now, in fifteen, twenty years' time, a significant turnaround can definitely be made. But if we allow this to roll on for another thirty, forty years, then it doesn't matter how hard we try, it will not turn around as easily as it could do now. So, when we talk about this, because right now, the conversation or the narrative is so divided, it's all over the place, scattered like this. If you say anything, it's fashionable in every city, especially urban people will say, Sadhguru, we must save the rainforests. I generally ask them, have you seen a rainforest? No, Sadhguru, I have… Uh, I've seen in the movies <laughs> Otherwise, now the new thing is ocean. See, you have not seen a rainforest, you've not been there. I'm not saying it's not important. The significance of agricultural soils is this. Seventy-one percent of the world's land is under agriculture. 
This is the only piece of land, this is a piece of geography where human hand is tending to it on a daily basis. Agriculture land is that land men and women are tending to it on a daily basis. Nobody is tending to a rainforest or the ocean on a daily basis. If you just don't go there, they will recover <laughs> Yes, it's a good thing you've not been there <laughs> So, agriculture land, we are tending to it, it is a part of our survival, it's a part of our commerce, it's a part of many things that we call our society and civilization. If we cannot fix the land that is being tended to by human hand on a daily basis, can you go and fix the Kalahari Desert or the ocean or something else? It's just, we're talking for entertainment, we're not talking for action. So is this going to be endless entertainment for us to talk about other creatures, how they are dying, what is happening? Or will we take necessary action? If you are not worried about any other uh, creature, at least your children, if you want them to be human beings, first thing is a human being should have food. If there is no food, it is not a question of civilization. Civilization anyway will go. Your humanity itself will evaporate. Three days, no food means your humanity will be gone in a given society. Yes or no? So, at least if you're not worried about any other creature, the human creature that you're born, at least for that one's sake, you need to act. I am not asking you to go and fix the lands. I am not even asking you to support me. You don't have to support me. All I'm saying is, every day get up and say, Save soil, 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 something, I make a song or a mantra or some goddamn thing. Say something, soil, soil, soil. If three to four billion people talk soil, well, there are ways and mechanisms with which we can move the governments. When… this is a th important thing, in a democratically elected government, in a democratic nation, the most important currency is numbers. It is the numbers which decide who rules and who doesn't rule, isn't it? So if you move the number, sixty percent of the electorate, if you move in a given nation, there is no way any political party will ignore that. We have written to seven hundred and thirty political parties on the planet, saying that soil and soil ecology must become a part of your political manifesto. Everybody is talking about tax benefit, this thing, that thing. It is important what is most fundamental to our life should become a part of our political process. Irrespective of your political ideology, irrespective of your race, religion, nationality, because your nationality, race, religion means nothing when it comes to soil and microorganisms and life. Life as such has nothing to do with your nationality, race, religion, caste, creed or whatever other nonsense you may believe in. Thank you. I'm sorry if I'm very abrasive, <laughs> the scientists. No, 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 <laughs> that's okay, they, they are here to support it. <laughs> so, Claire and Jean-Francois, um, you are both members of the technical and scientific and technical committee of the Four Per Mille initiative. Well, what do you want to say about the work of this uh, committee and how it could help in all what Sadhguru said? I, I would like to also ask... Hello, please. If you... if you, you can leave me on, I won't say something <laughs> I would also like to ask because uh, I did not know about... I had heard about this but I thought it's something that they discuss in the cops but this four per thousand, if it's the national policy, is it being implemented? Because this is the way forward. Is it being implemented? You want to answer? Well, what I can say, but also will compliment, is that uh, one really a, a great achievement of the Four Per Million Initiative was to raise awareness. And what I really appreciate in this initiative is that it associates food security and climate change. It's all about synergies. Now, this raising awareness, I think, has had consequences on the scientific community. Well, for example, the European Joint Programme Soil, I think, would not exist, and it's a big program, um, and it has raised a lot of debate among the scientific community. I think it has had a lot of influence also on policy, 
in particular at the European scale. It's really, there's a very strong momentum at the moment on soils at the European Commission. But the difficult part is implementation. Implementation, and yes, uh, farmers are the main stakeholders there. And it's not that easy, even though you know the principles, applying them, implementing them, it's not that easy. And for me, that's our challenge now in the Four Per Mill Initiative. So I could develop, but maybe I should, yes. Yes, thank you, Claire. Um, yes, I think it has been uh, moving uh, countries and stakeholders. Uh, and uh, I think we are uh, moving from uh, advocacy to understanding what is being done, what is being implemented. And that's really something I would like to see also, is that we have a, a monitoring of what is the land area that is really being now improved through actions from the governments, from the stakeholders that are members of this uh, initiative. So in some ways, uh, maybe we could help also with your campaign by having a sort of, uh, you know, um, way of uh, looking at uh, the uh, progress that is being done. Are there incentives to improve organic content in the soil? Well, incentives are normally with politics, and uh, we know that uh, it's very fragmented the way it is done. We see some regions, we see some countries doing specific things, funding and so on, but uh, I don't think we have a clear overview, and that's something we need to do. And implementation, implementation is also about uh, knowledge by farmers, well, the training, uh, exchanging with uh, their colleagues and I think there's a lot of uh, progress there to, to help them to implement, to take risks because it, it is taking risk when you apply a new, when you if you plant trees, you never planted trees, you're taking risks so you need not to be alone. And what's, uh, what's interesting is that, well this is a particularity of France is that uh, the education of farmers, young farmers, is in the end of the Ministry of Agriculture. It's not in the end of the Ministry of Education in France. So uh, the ministers, Stéphane Le Foll, who launched the Forbes Mill Initiative, uh, stay at this ministry for five years. And in five years, he enforced law in order to introduce agroecology in, in the whole training of the young farmers. And even in the high level school of engineer, they just also introduced that because they consider that the new generation will come and will be able to implement it in the field. So it will come step by step. We need also incentive, we need policy. And also you know that we are in Europe and in Europe we are working with the European Union and in European Union the European Commission has the uh, competencies for agriculture. So, and it's a, it's a huge boat. It, it's very difficult to turn direction of this boat. But it seems that the new commission are turning quite significantly the direction and considering more soil, well, they call that carbon farming. You call that whatever you want as far as you go in that direction. That, that's the idea of the Four Per Mill Initiative. This funny name is coming from a, a back of the envelope calculation about the quantity of carbon we should add to the soil of the planet every year in order to compensate all what we are generating. Well, that's theoretical, of course. It's every year, it's everywhere. But it, it gives a direction. It's like the north. You follow the north. Uh, I, I kind of, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of uh, briefly or very superficially, I looked at the recommendations that are being made in the European Union for regenerative farming. Well, it's good, but it's unnecessarily complex. The government is trying to do farming by itself. Why are you doing farming? The farmer will do it the way he wants. See, the thing is just this, is there any argument at all? Because I have not found one person in the last two years, I have spoken to thousands of people, scientists, bureaucrats, ministers, all sorts of people. Not one person has spoken to me in the negative. Everybody says, yes, three percent minimum organic content must be there, there's no question about that. Now you get into the nitty-gritty and the complexity for which which crop, what should be more? This needs nitrogen, that needs phosphate, this needs this, this soil needs that kind of stuff. This is an endless amount of science. When I spoke to FAO and others, they're saying they have reams and reams of research that nobody can read. The volume is so big. 
well, it's wonderful, so many scientists have invested their life in this, this could be useful sometime, but if it doesn't come into action, it is useless and waste of time and life. The science, in s the, our knowledge that we gain through somebody's investment of life into it, must become useful. So I'm saying there is no debate at all anywhere in the world, either in the farmer's mind, I've spoken to the fertilizer companies and others, in nobody's mind there is any debate that organic content should go up in the soil. When there is no debate, why can't we make a policy like that? First thing is, if you own agriculture land, you must get it to three percent. What is the duration? Ah, maybe in one soil you can say in three years you must get it, in another soil you can say six years you can get it. This is where the scientific uh, community should come in and say, see in this soil you can't get it to three percent in three years' time. It will take this much investments, let's do it in six years' time. But in general direction across the world, if each nation fixes what time, the only thing is the question will be only of pace, not of the fundamental principle. The fundamental principle that there should be organic content in the soil because that is the food for the microbial life. Without that, we are starving them. If we starve them, they will starve us one day. It's just a question of time. So that alone, if it is settled, the details of it can be done. Above all, I feel how the farming should be done should be left to the farmer. Others can advise because farming ecology is… I mean, farming economy is such a fragile thing. If you try to do something, uh, it'll go to suicide. Maybe just to, to um, add something on uh, this uh, four per thousand, that's uh, very close to what you said. Not all soils are the same, but if you think in terms… Uh, in relative terms, it is possible to increase by the 0.4 percent per year in most soil types. And uh, this is why we, we said this would be an aspirational target. Mm -hmm. We don't say uh, everybody will do it, but it would be feasible. And if done, it would have huge impacts on the planet. So in 10 years, 4 percent is what you're talking? 0.4 percent per year. I know, year. but in 10 years, it'll be 4 percent. Exactly, 4 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, and I wanted maybe to, to add on that, so I fully agree that uh, having setting an objective in terms of uh, content of organic matter is really uh, good, really uh, desirable. But if you do that and if you want to base incentives on, on that, it is having incentives based on results. Well, you can do it either by, uh, with cover crops, agroforestry, it's your problem, your farmer, yep. you, you choose. Which you choose way? what you know, what you can do, you choose. But if you want to have incentives, you need somehow to verify. At some stage, you need mm -hmm. to measure. And then comes science. How can we measure soil carbon content at low cost? And there's a lot of research there. So uh, we're not yet uh, there I must in terms of measuring at low cost. The Indian it. Institute of Technology in, uh, I think it's a Mumbai Institute, which is the Indian Institute of Technology, came up with a simple uh, soil organic content testing uh, thing that if you take a certain amount of soil, and put a certain solvent, it will show you what is the organic content. Now, this may not be perfect, perfect, but it generally shows you what is the organic content. Now, how we are using it is we just make a WhatsApp video call and tell the farmer, okay, poke it here, test it. Poke it there randomly at different places so that he's not making it up. So, within ten minutes, you can have the test done. Right now, if you want to test a vegetable or a fruit, how much? Uh, you know, pesticide or whatever else is there in it, it's a massive la lab work, all right? So, we have to have simple solutions, otherwise we'll be talking for too long. And the more we talk, more carbon dioxide will <laughs> fill that mouse here. <laughs> uh, well, at the end, I succeed to install a dialogue between each side of me. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, uh, I would like to almost conclude this, this uh, very important and interesting discussion. Um, sharing uh, an ambition with you, Sadhguru, uh, with Conscious Planet Save Soil, and we would like with Four Per Mill to play for the, the major UN convention. It was said by Ambassador just before. Um, this year, 2022, all UN convention 
climate change, desertification, biodiversity, we'll have what they call the COP, well, conference of parties. That be, because they are not the same number, so the people confuse. The other one is 15, the other one is 27, so it just mix up a little bit. Well, anyway, every two years, all the convention have the conference of parties. And this gives us the opportunity to rise high in the ad international agenda, the important subject of soil health. This is at the very heart of all crucial challenges the humanity is facing, climate change, biodiversity, and food security. Sadhguru, um, how can we work better than we never did, because before we never maybe know each other, um, with your enormous, fantastic movement of Conscious Planet Safe Soil and our modest initiative on 4 per mil? We would like to work more with you increase the, this awareness. So, what is your opinion? How can we work better together? <clears throat> one thing is, right now I'm speaking at COP15 in the month of May in Ivory Coast, where 170 nations are supposed to participate. This is why I'm pushing people, goading people, threatening them also a little bit, uh, <laughs> that if they can get at least three billion people before we are at the COP, if that many people have spoken, the government representatives who come cannot negate it, no political party will go back on that because politics is run on numbers. So will everything happen tomorrow morning? I'm not… I'm a horribly pragmatic person. I'm not uh, simply thinking romantically this is going to happen just overnight. We must begin to at least… we are going in the reverse direction. At least we must position ourselves in the right direction. At what pace each nation will go, at what pace each region will go, this is left to their… Uh, this thing and depends… some people will only wake up after disas disasters begin to strike, but at least we must be focused in the right direction. That is, there are organisms in the soil which not one or two, they are in trillions, okay? Trillion times more than us and they are there in the soil and they are there in our body. Sixty percent of our very body is microorganisms. Only forty percent is your parental genetics. I am not telling the children this because next time you, as a father, mother, you try to do something, they'll say, see, you are only twenty percent, you don't tell me all this <laughs> So, one thing is to realize this… this body and the earth that you walk upon or the soil that you walk upon are not two different things. When will we get it? If we get it right now, we can do something significant or we will anyway get it when we are buried, then also you make good manure, but <laughs> it's more useful to get it now. So, one important thing is the COP15 is a opportunity. Another is there is also a biodiversity COP a, a little later. There also there is a possibility, I am speaking at Chogum, that is a c commonwealth of nations, they have already given us a declaration, they will take to this three percent minimum organic content in commonwealth countries, which accounts for 2.7 billion people population in the world. The CARICOM nations have already signed up. One of the CARICOM nations is talking about they want us to set up an experimental, I mean uh, like a demonstration, they want to give us an island about three to four mi square miles, set up ten different crops, how it can be grown, how soil organic content can be improved. It is not necessary that you have to physically demonstrate, there are so many ways to do it. We have uh, any amount of video material as to how it is done in India, where soil organic content has been improved, or uh, water retention has been greatly enhanced simply because of the microbial activity. That is the way soil should be. Any soil, if you dig three, four inches with your finger, it should be damp. Right now it's dry to the core. This is death of organisms. Microorganisms need humidity and shade. Above all, you breathe, I know you breathe out carbon dioxide, but do you need oxygen or carbon dioxide? Why everybody's talking so much about carbon dioxide? We need to understand, see this moment, if you… if you don't eat for ten days, you may die. If you don't drink water for three, four days, you may die. 
But if you don't breathe for three minutes, you may die, you will die rather. <laughs> so what is it? In terms of air, right now the percentage of oxygen in this atmosphere is very vital for you. Scientists are saying a billion years ago, when uh, there was no photosynthesis on this planet, the oxygen content in the atmosphere was a shade over one percent, one point one percent or something like that. Today it's twenty-one percent, so we're all breathing. But in the last thousand years, the volume of photosynthesis that has come down is eighty-five percent. Eighty-five percent of photosynthesis on the planet is gone. Seventy percent of the land is ploughed, four point two percent of the land is paved. Nearly seventy-six percent of the land is… has no photosynthesis most of the time. In a year, agricultural land has photosynthesis of approximately maybe four… four months or two months or something like that, four to six months maximum. In tropical climates here, it's much less. Rest of the time, it's just bare. So there has to be more photosynthesis. Why are we continuously talking about carbon dioxide when oxygen is what we need? The oxygen content in the atmosphere has to go up means how it goes up means the carbon dioxide that we are terrified of, this plant takes it, breaks it down, makes it into carbon sugars, pumps it down into the soil and that is the food for the organisms, they are waiting for it and they are not simple people, they are very mean. Unless they get carbon sugars, they will not give the nutrients to the plant, that's a whole system out there and the waste material which the reject material is oxygen, which you and me need desperately, all right? So let's understand our position on the planet. Without us, the life will go on wonderfully well. Without them, we cannot live here. We are here because of them. They are not here because of us. Yes, thank you very much. I think it's more than wise what you said. I'm just now turning to the organizer who was supposed to have a little bit of uh, question and answer with the room. We have time? Okay, so the floor is open for question. Yes, the gentleman over there. You, you have so, a mic coming to you. Hello. Um, good evening, uh, panelists, and good evening, uh, Excellencies, and good evening, everybody. My name is Satish Vegi and uh, I'm a water management engineer by profession. Uh, my question, uh, first of all, I would like to thank for this excellent information and uh, I would like to also appreciate Sadhguru for, for this excellent uh, movement, Safe Soil. My question is, uh, I think the madam, sorry I forgot your name, but you have mentioned about implementation. I think uh, today after going back to home, I don't want to sleep. so. Uh, I would like to check with you what are the list of actions a common man can do to improve the organic content in the soil as a common person. D how much land do you have? <laughs> I, I, d I don't have any, any land, but I can, I can find some uh, volunteers where, with whom I can work. Or, no, yeah. no, nobody wants to let you on their land. <laughs> right now, as a dem citizen of a democratic nation, you have a vote and you have a voice. Vote is your business, I will not mess with that. But your voice, this is the time to stand up and scream. Yes, to scream today, you have many tools and technologies like never before. This is the first time in the history of humanity that you can sit here and talk to the whole world. Never before it was possible. Many great beings have come in this world, when they spoke, hardly ten people heard. This is the first time you can sit here and talk to the world. Now you are talking about going to… you going back and working in your neighbor's kitchen garden and fixing that, that's very cute of you, I appreciate <laughs> But it's not a solution. It is not a solution. You fixing your kitchen garden is very cute, but it's not a solution. A time has come when you need to understand seventy-one percent of of the land on the planet is agriculture. If you don't fix that, you fixing your garden, me fixing my garden is not the solution. Okay, I'm sorry thank you. <laughs> Clear, do you want to answer anyway? No? It's okay? <laughs> you got your answer, sorry <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs>
Uh, there were a gentleman just at the back. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Madam, go ahead. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks to Conscious Planet and to Isha Foundation for inviting me here. I come from Colombia. I live in Lyon. I had the great opportunity to meet Sadhguru thanks to my sister. And it was a year and a half ago. I didn't know you. And just before, I did, I've never heard about you. And since I hear about you, my life has changed because you are the one who helped me to show my students question, how, to, how to say consciously and awareness. And I would like to know how also can we improve to feel proud of being farmer, because that is very tough. People is losing this hope. I know that there are some initiatives, but how can also we change this storytelling globally? Thank you. Well, uh, we will be working with the Colombian government because uh, your environment minister uh, is our meditator. So, <laughs> we will definitely be working with the, the Colombia. <clears throat> so, this is very important. There is science. Science is solid. It's there. There is substantial soil science today. So many people have invested their life into, you know, exploring this science. Now, this science cannot reach the people because it's too technical, you will have to be a scientist to understand this. So you definitely need a story. To make a story out of science without distorting the fundamental aspects of science, but making it light enough for everybody to understand is right now the work. This is what I'm trying to do. I sought permission. I was just telling them when we uh, met outside in the, uh, in the corridor, outside of the lobby. When I went to Rome about four months ago, all the top scientists were sitting there and all the soil scientists from various agencies. I said, see, you have invested your lifetime into this. I know what it means to you. Nobody invests life into something that doesn't mean anything, anything to them. It means something to them. But I have this moment and I'm going to make your science not simple, simplistic I will make it. Is it okay? They said in one voice, I was surprised, Sadhguru, simplistic is the way forward. We have reams and reams of research that even academics and universities have not opened the books and read it ever. It's simply sitting there. It is simplistic is the way forward. When I met uh, Ratan Lalji, he said, Sadhguru, this is what is needed. I've been waiting for someone like you to take this message. I have spoken whatever I can, but it just doesn't open doors. So not that just because I do this for hundred days, everything is going to happen. This is where as responsible citizens you matter, okay? This is not a one-day thing. You must keep this up in whichever way you can. Right now how to do it, follow the journey, save soil on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Say something, say something your own or go to the websites of uh, World Food Program or uh, FAO, whatever, look it up. If you can't understand, go to the savesoil.org in a much more simplistic way. It is there, pick that up and say whatever you want. If you don't know anything to say, Say, save soil, la la le le le. <laughs> that much you can do. <laughs> I'm saying whatever it is. And uh, there is a save soil song, you can download it from the website. Let it reverberate in your home, in your community, in your country, in the world. Let it happen because this is not about me. This is not about this journey. This is about changing the narrative on the planet. I cannot go and fix all the soil. Those people who are super knowledgeable about this, they cannot fix it. A democracy means only people can fix it. That's what it means. That is the only way to fix it. So, first of all you need to understand this is not an agitation, this is not a protest, this is an expression of our responsibility. I'm stressing on this because if you say environment, if you say ecology, 
first thing they ask is, whose face shall we bash? People are telling me, Sadhguru, we must get the children whipped up. I said, leave the children alone. Till a child is fifteen years of age, let them grow up unconcerned, joyfully, eating well, playing well, sleeping well, learning well, that's what they should do. No, you want to whip up the children into hate. This is not a solution. If you get angry, you're causing global warming. <laughs> Definitely you are, <laughs> isn't it? So a child's way of handling emotions are such that if you put anger, hatred into their life early on, you're poisoning their life very early because they can't drop those things. It'll become a part of them in their whole life. So if you involve your children, ask your child to write a love letter to your prime minister. Right now, Isha Home School in India took this up upon themselves and they said they are going to get ten million letters to our prime minister's office in India. We have not gotten to ten million, some few millions have happened, but already prime minister's office is inundated with children's paintings and save soil messages and all kinds of things. You think the prime minister can ignore this? Hello? In any nation, you think they can ignore this? So I'm telling you, do this, get one million children in Colombia to write to your prime minister. Have two million children in France writing to your prime minister. Because this is a way of expressing your commitment and responsibility. This is not a protest, this is not about a fight with somebody. Oh, Sadhguru, how will you fight with the fertilizer companies? I am not going to fight with the fertilizer companies. I want to acknowledge them in great gratitude because without them, half the population would be dead. You better know this. If you take away these things tomorrow, fertilizer, pesticide, this, that, everything, if you take away all the chemicals, our food production will come down to twenty-five percent of what it is. That means flattening of the populations. So let us not get into fanciful things. Increasing the organic content simply means this, you have strength in the soil. How to do the farming? Let the farmer decide how to do the farming. You can set the agenda by asking for a particular type of product in the marketplace, that's your business. But you can't tell the farmer how he should do the farming. And right now, this is one thing I, well, I like to bring to the scientists and also to your notices. When I read this European Commission's, uh, you know, uh, policy kind of thing, I've not studied it, I've just kind of looked at it. We are trying to say, okay, only this much fertilizer should be used, only this much pesticide should be used. This is not correct. I've, I've lived on the farms, I've been with farmers. See, in here, if you have a particular type of soil, particular type of atmosphere, you may be using a certain amount of whatever chemicals. For the same crop, five kilometers away or not even that much, a kilometer away, in another type of soil you may have to use a different quantum of everything. So let the farmer decide how much to use. You decide what you want to eat in the marketplace. But if somebody says, if the gradation is like this, this comes from this much enriched soil, it's for you to pay more or less for that. And uh, as to make this happen, share the Save Soil song, make Save Soil song reverberate everywhere, you can da da da. All this, this is… I'm not good at reading these things, okay <laughs> And there are make Save Soil stickers and at least put it on your car if you… So I don't have a car, okay, put it on your clothes <laughs> Thank you, sir. Just Thank you, ma'am. find a solution. Don't go on picking problems in everything. There are enough problems in the world. We don't you need you to research for new problems. There are substantial problems in the world. Let's see how to be a solution for something. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have time for more questions, but we will move on to a short, beautiful video. Le 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 
This very body is soil. My body, your body, everybody is just soil body. of soil is it turns death into life Depleted soils will not quench the fire of hunger. Unquenched hunger can burn the very world. This is a generational responsibility. Save soil. Let's make it happen. request ambassador sir to kindly come on to the stage and we can have a group picture he asked me what is the common thing we can do we have a small end. yes and then So there's, as uh, Sadhguru said, there must always be action. And as a consequence of this meeting, we already have one action, which is an MOU to be signed between Isha Foundation and four per thousand initiative soils for food security and climate for cooperation in achieving our objective of creating a healthier soil. So this is how we have to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where are two copies? Where are Table would have been nice, but once we'll finish this thing. Thank you. 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 Thank I already signed it. <laughs> you already signed, please.
Yes, and please hold it up for the photo. One senator is missing, but we will send it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I will, I will send it yep. to you. I will send it to you over because it uh, we need to be signed by another person. Oh, okay. and I will send both. Oh, thank you. Oh, you'll send both. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You can come here, please. Here we are. Le 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 le